16th of December, 1873, not to be opened or read until after my death. The last statement and confession of Elizabeth Walcock to Mr. Bickford Sir. I was born in the Borough Mine in the province of South Australia in the year 1847. I then went to Victoria in 1851. I was left without the care of a mother at the age of four years and I never saw her again until I was 18. My father died when I was nine years old. Now I had to get my living until I heard that my mother was alive and residing at Mountamine. I thought I should like to see my mother and have a home like other girls. So I gave up my situation and came to Adelaide. I had a good home for two years and became a Sunday school teacher at the Wesleyan Church. I went to keep house for my late husband Thomas Walcock against my stepfather's wishes. I kept house for him for six weeks when someone told my stepfather I was keeping company with Thomas. He told me he would cripple me if I went with him any more. And I, being very self-willed, told him that I had not been with the man, but I would go with him now. I told Thomas what had taken place, and he asked me to go with him for a walk. My husband asked me if I would marry him, and for my word's sake I did. We were married the next Sunday morning. I tried to do my duty to him and the child. But he was fond of drink, and God only knows how he treated me. I put up with it for three years, during which time my parents went to Melbourne. I tried to put an end to myself, several different ways, but thank the Lord, I did not succeed. I left him, but he would not leave me alone came and fetched me home again and twelve months later I left him again with the intention of going to my mother but he fetched me back again. He did not behave no better to me. I tried my best to please him but I could not. There is no foundation at all for the story about the young man called Pasco. He was nothing to me. Nor I did not give the poor dog any poison, for I know what power the poison had, as I took it myself for some months, and I was so ill-treated. I was quite out of my mind, and in an evil hour, I yielded to the temptation. He was taken ill at the mine, and came home and quarrelled with me. Satan tempted me and I gave him what I ought not. But I thought at the time, if I gave him time to prepare to meet his God, I should not do any great crime to send him out of the world. I see my mistake now, and thank God he had time to make peace with his maker. And I hope I shall meet him in heaven, for I feel that God has pardoned all my sins. He has forgiven me and washed me white in the precious blood of Jesus. I feel this evening that I can rejoice in the love and Saviour. I feel his presence here tonight. He sustains me and gives me comfort under his heavy trial such as the world can never give. Dear friend, if I may call you so, I am much obliged to you for your kindness to a poor guilty sinner, but great will be your reward in heaven. I hope I shall meet you there, and I hope that God will keep me faithful to the end. We may be able to say, that to live is Christ, but to die will be gain. Bless the Lord, 
he will not turn away any that come unto him. For he says, Come unto me, all ye that labour, and are every laden, and I will give you rest. I feel I have that rest. I hope to die, singing victory through the blood of the Lamb. I remain, sir, yours truly a sinner, saved by grace. Elizabeth Walcock